Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest and California Weather Watch. And today we're doing the April 2nd eclipse forecast, the April 8th, 2024 eclipse forecast. So as you can see, I've clicked on main here and you can see the duration of totality about three minutes and 23 seconds. I'll show you another problem with what's going on with this storm system is it's gonna bring clouds over Texas here. So as you move further down to the south and west, you get more duration there. So three minutes and 52 seconds across Ohio, if we go to Arkansas here, you got four minutes and 13 seconds and you top it out right near the Mexico up USA border there at about four minutes and 28 seconds. You have to take my word for it. I can zoom in here and click on it a little bit more, but you get further you go Southwest, the longer the eclipse is here as well. And typically climatologically speaking, this is the clearest area. So I know a lot of people were planning on setting up in Texas but that not, might not be the case if you want to be cloud free. And we'll dive into that forecast here in a minute. But you can see if you click down here, you can, you know, 74%, usually climatologically speaking there, Del Rio, as far as being cloud free. And then places like Cleveland are usually about 40%. But we might be flipping the script here a little bit at this forecast as we go on into April 8th. Of course, every year is going to be different. This is just an overall average. Now, if we take a look here at the European level first, the GFS on the right, this is at 18,000 feet. This just a great job at showing the ridge in trough position. You can kind of see the ridge moving across. We're on April 6th now. System moves out into the plains here on the 7th, and that could be an issue as well with spreading clouds across the area. But there's really good model agreement. This is the time the eclipse would be taking place, and you can clearly see this storm system across the southwest USA that would have big impacts as far as even severe thunderstorms across portions of Texas. Now let's take a look at the subtropical jet stream at 200 millibars, about 39,000 feet up in the atmosphere. So let's go ahead and scroll ahead to the seventh here and you can kind of see that subtropical jet is going to be all the way across the USA, all the way back down across Baja, out over the Pacific Ocean. By the time we go towards the eighth, you can see the next round of this storm system moving on the, rounding the base of the trough here across the southwest and back into Texas right as the eclipse is occurring. So that could make for an interesting scenario. So even if we do get some clearings, clearing across portions of Texas and there's hundreds of thousand viewers out there, you know, you could have some of this thunderstorm activity, severe thunderstorms roll over the area as you go through the afternoon. And, you know, traffic doesn't move that fast when you're trying to clear out from an eclipse. You know, I can speak as, from experience there, even just across Oregon and Washington state, much more sparsely populated up there. It took me, you know, over twice as long to get back home. So that could be an issue in of itself as we go through the nighttime hours on the 8th. But again, that subtropical jet stream is looks like it's pretty persistent, pretty good model agreement between the GF GFS and the European. Taking a look at the simulated infrared satellite imagery, let's scroll through the days here. So this is the European and it kind of tries to simulate that infrared satellite imagery. Here we go through the 6th. Now we're into the 7th, that system moving across the plains and still it's got some clouds associated with it. Subtropical jet stream hanging across Texas. And by the time we go into the 8th, again, you can see that energy rounding the base of this trough and moving into the state of Texas here. This is the time the eclipse would be occurring. So you can see, you can actually see some clearing across Northeast Texas, across portions of Arkansas, maybe on in through Illinois and Indiana as well. So there's still some chances here, you know, to see some places are gonna be clear for the eclipse. We're just trying to figure out where. And climatologically speaking, it kind of kind of strange here that the, the area that's usually the most clear is probably gonna be pretty cloudy here. And then severe thunderstorms likely on this day. It looks like across portions of Texas, maybe in a, into Oklahoma and Arkansas and Louisiana as well. So if we take a look at the European, I'm going to scroll through this really quickly here as well. And you can see that system moving out in the plains on the 7th. And then the system on the 8th starts to roll in here as we go. That's about the time the eclipse would be occurring. So precipitation, of course, the cloud deck is going to, or the cloud layer and the cloud is going to be spread out quite a bit more than this. The cloud layers, you know, there's going to be mid and high level clouds associated with this precipitation also. So you're going to be blotting out the sun pretty good there potentially. But there's still some hope, as you saw. It shows a little bit of clearing there for some portions of Texas into Arkansas as well. So if we take a look at actual total cloud cover percentage, I'm going to put this into motion. The GFS is on the right. The European is on the left. We're going to scroll out here. And once we get out past 90 hours, it should settle down. There we go. Now we're going on into the seventh here. Again, you can see that cloud layer across the Texas. And we go on into the the nighttime of there a Sunday night and on into Monday and kind of see a bit of clearing, but then some of those mid-level clouds start to come over the area here and maybe a little bit of clearing 
uh, it's man, it's tough sledding. And you can kind of see these clouds just mimic almost that path of totality. It looks like Maine wants to be clear on both the GFS and the European right now, but this can still change. And you can see there is some clearing along the path there, and it might end up where I just go to Texas and I just hope that we get some clearing and I'll try to stay mobile and try to drive around to the area that looks like it's going to be clear on the day of April 8th here. So still haven't decided what exactly I'm going to do. Hopefully this isn't putting a monkey wrench in your guys' plans too much here. But I mean, it's still not too late possibly to change, you know, or just to remain pretty mobile there and drive off to an area that's a bit more clear. But that's easier said than done here because I was checking flights yesterday as well and hotels, rental cars. It's a whole logistical nightmare trying to change your plans here in the last week of such a major viewing event across the U.S. So I may just be stuck down here in Texas, fly in and maybe just try to drive around and find clearing. And it correlates with the timing of the eclipse. But anyway, hope you guys are liking these videos. I'll continue to do these eclipse videos all the way to the 7th. And I do plan on live streaming the eclipse on April 8th as well. So hopefully you can join me for that and hopefully the skies are clear and we can get some awesome shots out there as well. Or maybe I can even find a, a thunderstorm or something going on, a severe thunderstorm at the same time and try to get some lightning bolts with the eclipse on the side. Who knows? It's it's fun to dream though, right? But anyway, uh, yeah, so check back tomorrow. We'll do the video again and I'll do my normal briefings for the California Pacific Northwest Weather Channel and I will talk to you guys then.